<coughs> I knew we'd go live as soon as I started coughing. Welcome, guys. Um, welcome to the Tat Chat, our regular Tuesday show. Uh, I'm Nick, and I'm here as ever with Zahir. How are you, mate? Hi there, everybody. Um, um, there's a bit of an echo. Is there? Yeah. Oh. Have you got it muted? Let me. Now you've muted me now, I think. No, I muted me. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, now it's fine. Yeah, now it's fine. Yeah. So, yeah I can yeah. hear it. I could hear the. Yeah. <laughs> yep, we're good. Um, okay. Everything is A OK. Just um, got back from getting a flat tire fixed, which is always an, a nice surprise. Um, but luckily, my spare was a, like a brand new tire. So they just swapped it out and um, fixed up the, 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 the flat. And um, I'm back in time for the chat. Yeah, life has a habit of getting in the way. My car, my Ford, has got an engine warning thing, and it's been like that now for two or three weeks. I just can't be bothered to deal with it. It's, it could be expensive or it could be nothing, but I just don't want to take it in and find out. I know what you mean. I've got an engine light on my car going for ages. We know what it is. Apparently, it's the knock sensor. Um, we've even bought the knock sensor, but we just haven't gone and... Um, what to the get hell it, does that do that? What's, what's God that? knows. I don't know. It's a sensor, it, but it, it's um, it looks like a just weird little shape, like a little um thimble almost. Right. Um, yeah, it's just weird. I don't know, but it's like we bought it off eBay pretty cheap, but we haven't taken it in because apparently to get to it and fit it is a long job. And yep. I was like, oh, that's going to cost money. So you know, yeah, cars running okay. <laughs> so. <laughs> So, yeah, welcome, everybody. If you're new, we are both resellers. We're both full-time resellers. We buy stuff, as you can see, I'm surrounded by, as is here. And we sell it online, and that's how we earn our living. And we just come on here and share what we're up to, really, what's going on in the world of reselling. And uh, let me just dip in the chat. There's a live chat. You're welcome to pop questions in, say hello. First in today was Peter. Peter's always an early bird and had a bit of a chat going on with Elaine earlier. Let's scroll down. We've got Bum Crack Picker. Karin is in there. Oh, Hi Highland Panda's got the answer of what a knock sensor does. Oh, really? Yeah. It sounds kind of important. I can't see it. Oh, yeah. it's, it's at the bottom, so we'll, we'll get to it in a moment. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm there now. <laughs> yeah. Calculates engine knock and, and sends a signal to the ECU. Engine knock. Which, which then alters fuel mixture to match. Oh, right. Whatever. I'll just pretend so, I understand all that. It yeah, sounds yeah. important. <laughs> well, your car's been running fine for how long without it? Oh, months. <laughs> but still. <laughs> uh, hi there, Lonnie. Uh, Karen. Right. Uh, let me scroll down, scroll down. Right. I think I've caught up. So... We didn't particularly have a topic, um, but I had a message. Let me just open the message uh, from Peter Cummins. I don't know if Peter's in yet. I'm not so Yeah, there he is. Hi there, Peter. Um, Peter messaged me and said, can't find it now. Oh, too many windows. <laughs> Bear with. Here we go. Um, yeah, he said, uh, just thought of a topic for the tat chat, keeping tidy. It occurred to me as I stepped over the piles of tat to get to the laptop, how am amazing how it takes so little time to make a mess, but ages to clear it up. And boy, does that ring a chord with me. I have, I've battled with this my entire life. I'm a messy person anyway. And then you add this being my job. It's a bad combination. Andrea is not the tidiest either. She's not here, so I can say that. So together, we're just awful. I mean, last night, I was working late last night, and I've still got stuff half covering the entire floor, mainly because I haven't got space to put it. But this is my packing area. It just stays almost permanently like this. So yeah, for me, it's a constant battle. Do you do you find that as a hero, or are you better with keeping tidy? No, I'm I'm terrible. Um, yeah, I, I really do think it's it's another one of those things that you don't expect to be an issue because it sounds so simple. Mm -hmm. um, do you know what I mean? It seems kind of a really um, weird and 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 like you know not really a normal problem to have. It, it doesn't sound like it should be a problem 
but it really can be to the point where it can start affecting your productivity because there's been plenty of times where I've walked into where I'm meant to be working, like my work area, and it's surrounded by all kinds of random bits that I've, you know, I might have been researching something and I've left it out there, or I might, I might have been looking at something else and I've left it out, and suddenly it, the whole place just looks like a mess, and you just sit in the mess, going, you know, <laughs> oh, right. and, and then and, you don't know where to start or how. No. To start. So it generally, it it sounds such. A, it's one of those dangerous problems where you, you know, you it can affect you so much that it can start actually affecting your money. And it sounds really daft because it really can, because your productivity will suffer. Um, and yeah, it, it's, it is a constant, constant battle. I mean, on the other end of the scale, I know you've visited Steve Hicks's house. I've only seen pictures that he shared and he is the other extreme from me and you perhaps where yeah. everything's lined up square, neat, tidy. And, maybe i don't know if steve would agree with this but maybe you can go too far the other way where you spend too much time making everything neat i don't know i'm not sure if you'd agree with that but it's, there it's, has to be yeah. a middle ground surely i think there does have to be i mean yeah steve is really ocd about his like office space but i reckon it must help work because you know it, you can then really motor through a lot of work because you're not constantly um like getting stuff moved you know you're not you're not constantly coming across falling over yourself basically you're not constantly tripping over your own junk like you know just to do a simple thing so for example if i was to start packaging right now i'd have i can't just start packaging i've got to clear some mess before i can start packaging or yeah. or if i wanted to you know just do anything like get to anything i'm going to have there's like a job on top of a job because I've not been doing this level of maintenance. Um, to just shout out, I think Karen has super chatted. Yes, I just noticed. Let me find that again. Hold on. Sorry, Karen. Uh, yeah, Karen No Cross Just More, who has a channel, by the way, guys. If you haven't checked that out, please uh, click through the link on the side. Um, Karen says, sold a tacky wrestling belt, Tata Z. Thank oh. you. Oh, right. Oh, fantastic. Glad you had some success with that. You can get those big ones that spin around and stuff. I'm assuming that's what you mean. Yeah, like kid, kids belts, I think. They're like, but they're, yeah, but they're, you, you kids can wear them to dress up and. Yeah. I have kids. still, you've been sharing those for like, what, three years or something? I've still yeah. never seen one. It's no not way. even that I found an expensive one. I've never seen one. That's crazy. I know, right? That's Thank crazy. you so much for Super yeah. Chat, Karen. It's great that, you know, we can all pick up little tips here and there that eventually, hopefully, will pay off. Yeah, totally. Cool. totally. But it's also interesting how some things are so abundant and then you just haven't come across it. You'd have thought you'd have spotted them. I, know, I see right? them everywhere. Yeah. Like, I, I, you know, I literally, you know. Um, um, let me just yeah. read, uh, see what people are saying about sure. the topic. Uh, Lonnie says, great topic, Peter. I think it is. It, it does like to hear just said. It sounds like a small thing, yeah. but it is huge. And I think um, tidy, uh, in reality, kind of tidy mind. How, what's that phrase? And I think that's... Cluttered, so cluttered mind. Yeah, cluttered space, cluttered mind type. Yeah, something like that. And I, I've, I've always been open about the fact that I am just here, there, and everywhere in my mind. I've got too mm. much going on, and I... I I'm just crazy in my head. And that's why my office is like this. As somebody just pointed out, uh, Lena, Nick, your room is a mess and about 20 <laughs> exclamation marks. Yeah. And this is tidy, guys. This is actually really good. So it's, yeah. it, it is definitely, uh, uh, you know, when the situation is, it, again, it reminds you back to when you were, for example, in employment and there was always a massive, no matter which, um, sector you've worked in, whether you worked in an office job, whether you worked in a um, as a as a traveling sales rep, if you worked in retail, you look back and you actually realize there was a massive, massive um, focus on tidiness. Mm -hmm. So, for example, like obviously when we worked at 
when I worked at Dixon's, it was always about dusting, wiping the shelves, making sure the, the items were looking presentable. Everything was organized, clean. You'd be constantly wiping. If you weren't busy, you'd be cleaning. It was the same at Harrods, but even more so. I mean, like at Harrods, it was really hardcore. Like it was constant. You had to maintain. And even when I, I thought I'd gotten away from it when I got my, my sales rep job, but then it became about your car. Your car is your office. It's got to be tidy. And they'd have in they'd have inspections and you'd think, oh God, what a waste of you know, they're treating us like kids. And then you start thinking, actually, those are like multi-million pound companies and they're yeah. doing those. They wouldn't do those things if they were just inefficient wastes of money. They do those things because they know that time spent hammering home a message of, you know, organization and tidy will result in all of these money. things come from experience and those companies have learned if you don't mm -hmm. set things up like when i worked in virgin and our price they had rotors for hoovering they had rotors for dusting off the racking and all of this stuff because they'd learned from experience if you don't have it in place it won't get done yeah and i suppose when you bring it down to our tiny little level if you don't have some system in place for keeping your working space tidy it won't be and that's exactly where I, I am. I just want to add, by no means are Nick and I preaching this because obviously we don't practice this stuff. We're, We're just observing. Of what not to do. We're just observing that there is a, a, an area that we can improve in. Um, I don't want it to come across like that we're talking about it and, and you know, we're sat in all this. Kind I think people are well aware. I hope so anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, Elaine says Andrea will be watching next door. Shh, she's actually out with Monty, so I can say what I want. But she does sometimes catch up on these at a later date, so I might get a slap tomorrow. <laughs> uh, yeah, Lonnie says, so true, the crap can really slow you down. And when I read that, and when you were saying earlier about you, you go to do a job and you then have three other jobs to do, I have literally like five pairs of scissors in this office. Every time I come to pack, I have no scissors. It's ridiculous. I've even bought a pack of hooks to put under here about six months ago and I haven't put them up yet to hang my scissors on. That's how I, I, I really think it's a personality thing though, because, yeah. because I, I, I the worst part about it is, is like Beck is the opposite. Beck is tidy. So mm. she will organize. Like if Beck was running this down here, this would be infinitely more organized. I'd know where things are like, it, I, I mean, like even when it came to storing the RC parts, right. Um, you know, we have 4,000 individual RC parts. Um, and this is comes, this, this is where organization comes in. The way I was doing it was so messy. I and now, staring, yeah. so, so if I sell something now within the first three boxes, I shake my head and I get depressed because I know I'm going to have to go through my organization, <laughs> which is <laughs> rubbish and, you know, lazy for anything that sells after that. When Beck came on board with those, it's so easy. And I look forward to pulling those parts out. And it's the same in her office upstairs. She's got everything neat and tidy. But the worst part is, I I will often say to her, oh God, you're wasting so much time doing that. But the reality probably is that like the time she's spending cleaning is probably saving her that much time, yeah. you know, in the long run. Whereas I'm probably the one wasting more time. So it's definitely a personality thing where we we look at you know other people. And I'm like I look at Beck and I'll be like, oh, that's a bit of a you know, why why are you doing that? Why do you have to? pay that much attention to it and so because actually hmm. i'm quite good on those things i have really good systems in place for finding stock i think there's nothing i hate more than not being able to find an item of stock so that part of it i'm actually quite good at i think i've learned over years that is worth putting the time into as you found yeah um but just day to day knowing where my pen is or knowing where my tape gun is or stuff i just i'm just hopeless absolutely hopeless um right let me dip in the chat again yeah uh liquid gaming oh that's haven't you been play, uh, gaming with with him online oh yes we have been that's yeah. i'm i'm the legend in he's Fortnite. the one who knows how to play the game he's the one who, yeah he's the one who knows how to play and <laughs> for some reason is putting himself through some kind of mental training i think to deal with because <laughs> of, often it's him alive and all three of us crawling oh, no. around on the floor. That tends to be yeah, most of the guys crawling around going, yeah. save me, save me. <laughs> and he's building skyscrapers, yeah. Well, he says, uh, hello, great timing. I'm about to do some listing and now have the perfect background video. Fantastic. Superb, superb. Um, uh, 
All right. Oh, there's a question there. Oh, lost it. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I see Stephen Steffer in the chat as well. Claire and Leah. Um, yeah. Oh, there's loads of chat. Sorry, I'm wide behind. I was just trying to find yeah. a question that I Le missed. Lena Barnes says we have a scissor eater in our office too. Yeah, mine just disappeared into a black hole. But it's if, when you've got that much stuff around you, though, sometimes you, you, you trip yourself up because you put something down and then you won't be able to see it amongst, you know, all, all the clutter. Uh, and it can, it just slows you down definitely massively. Oh my word. I've just realized how far back I was. I'm trying to get back to a question. <laughs> I can't even get there. It's gone. Wow. Thank you so much for the chat, guys. I'm sorry we're as inefficient at reading it as we are as keeping our offices tidy. Yep. Um, oh, sorry. I don't know where it was. I've lost that one. Okay. Uh, oh, there's Ryan in there. Ryan says, main thing for me is to have the listed stock in place in a location marked so I can find it. Yes, exactly. That's what I was saying. Non-listed stock, who cares? As long as it's in, not in front of the PC, I'm happy. That's pre That pretty much sums up my organization, yeah. If it's listed, I can genuinely find it within a few, well, within 30 seconds usually. But unlisted, I wouldn't know where anything is. But the thing is, if the unlisted stuff was organized or just neatly, it doesn't even have to be organized, just neatly stored, mm. um, you might find it easier to just pick items out and, and go through them more rather there's than... There's no doubt. There is no doubt. Um, th there's got to be something to that. Um, well... I'm just wading through the chat. Yeah. So many people. Popping. Mr. Diggs Deal says, thanks for the birthday wishes, guys and gals. So it was birthday, was it? I didn't know. Oh, happy birthday. Yeah, happy birthday, yep. Um, Gary is probably struggling with tidiness at the moment. Southwest Sellers says, house now completely rammed with today's auction lots. See, we, we do yeah. struggle against a tide of stuff. I mean, you may have seen we went to that jumble sale at the weekend and we bought in a car full of stuff and immediately you have to find somewhere for that to live and inevitably it just goes on the floor here um and i spent i was up late last night as i said and sorting through this stuff and i've still got most of it sat on the floor it, it takes uh, that's, time that's something to definitely bear in mind because you know it's it, when you're buying in large amounts and especially as the car boot sale season comes in and you're going out every weekend you know both days to a number of car boots and you're bringing home loads of stuff you're going to the charity shops you're bringing home loads of stuff auctions um you know it that will definitely make your job a lot harder i mean it's it's a lot easier to keep your house tidy than it is like an office house based type thing tidy because obviously with your normal home the only thing you're regularly bringing in is your shopping your food shop um and you only do that once your cupboards are empty <laughs> so yeah i know what you mean we're not the best at keeping our regular house tidy that's why we have to have regular people coming around so we're guilted into tidying up <laughs> Uh, Fritz is in. Hi there, Fritz. He says, Nick, it's impossible to get everything neat if you take big IKEA bags full of stuff home, like you show, showed us earlier this week. You just need your own warehouse. Yeah, this is my warehouse. <laughs> I just struggle to keep it neat. Um, Highland Panda says, I'm the messiest man alive. My wife will testify. <laughs> Fair enough. Imagine if you still had those car mats that are still sat there as well. That would have just because those so, took up a lot. I was of space. so relieved to get rid of them. That was yeah, that was great. And they're selling. I shared with you earlier, didn't I? Yeah, you saw like three or something. Um, right? Yeah, a couple at fifty pound a set, and okay. another set at forty. Nice. Yeah, I spoke to the guys at Habu, and they they yeah, they've had a load more people sign up, uh, which is great, and. Yeah, I was really pleased with the service because they're shipping the stuff out within 24 hours. So, yeah, it's all going well. Excellent. Um, Charlotte says, is it just me who looked at your room, Nick, and thought how tidy it was? Not the packing <laughs> table, but everything else. Yeah, this is actually quite good. But that's yeah. the result of a few hours last night of listening. I, I think it's because the shelves give off like a look of uniformity because of the same stock that you've got there. I think that's a bit... Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah like books. yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Books, you're, not, you're, not, you're not really seeing like all the stuff on the floor when he's sat yeah, there. So. They, they're just not selling very fast anymore, so they, they'll stay there forever. <laughs> okay, let me try and get to the bottom of the chat. Um, 
Saz guest. There's mess and there's just full up. Most of us have limited space, I guess. So that's so it's just a case of trying to fit it in where you can. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, Definitely. I've been there many times, just piling crap on top of crap, and then you know something needs to change. <laughs> But you, you have to work that much harder. I mean, I think it is like a constant thing to be reorganizing because I think sometimes what happens is a lot of a lot of us will do this. And I, I mean, I've done this as well, where I will put the effort in and organize everything so it looks decent. But then the issue then what happens then is like when you bring in more stuff and it has to fit into a certain space, but you've, because the way you've packed it, you have to remove things to get more things in. And, you know, because obviously you're limited in space. So you, you, you pack things like, you know, you either stack things really high or you, or, or whatever, you have loads of boxes or loads of shelving. It can still be awkward because then you're like, am I really going to pull all that out just to put this in? So it's in its right place. Yeah. And it goes, ah, it would just, it would be fine just in front there's nothing yeah. worse than listing a big awkward shaped thing and then you don't have a space on your yeah. listed items bay to put it so then you have to put it somewhere else and then you're really annoyed because yeah. it doesn't live Go. exactly because it, it doesn't fit somewhere else oh yeah exactly <laughs> ideally everything would fit perfectly in in the spaces allocated Oh, Karen's got a great comment there. She says, my old job, I sorted the whole reception office and labelled everything. People thought I had OCD, but seven years later, the office is still the same, so I must have done something right. Absolutely. If you can get systems in place that work, then, yeah, that's it. You're set up. And like I was saying, with listing, you may see these little labels on here. I'm pretty OCD about listing and stuff. Because so many times I have lost things and it drives you nuts because you can lose a sale because you can't find the item. And there's nothing worse than losing the sale. Lonnie has actually made a good comment near the bottom of the chat. He says, even when my stuff is neat, it looks messy. Everything is a weird shaped one off. That's mm. the other thing. It's like you get all this nice shelving or racking or whatever. and But because you're buying so many different items, it, it just doesn't, you know, it's not the same, is it? Yeah, it always looks like a junk shop. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa says oh sorry Lena Barnes says here did you tidy up just for the chat or is it always this tidy um you haven't seen the floor <laughs> there's, um, yeah that bit looks tidy because I don't know yeah it looks pretty back. tidy a bit yeah. we can see anyway yeah You've probably noticed from the last like about a month, this these heaps have stayed just about the same. This is just crap I haven't put away. <laughs> stays there for months. Um, somebody was saying here, oh, it's Peter Cummins actually says, uh, laugh out loud. I play where's the scissors too. Every every day, basically, I lose my scissors, my tape gun, <sighs> stapler. Can never find a stapler. The the thing that measures the width of the letters. Oh, yeah, that the guide. I can put oh, you... my hand on that. That's one of the few things I know where it is. <laughs> oh, hey. You need the key for the car. Andrew's just got back. Can I say hello? I know. Oh, you got to go. Okay. okay. <laughs> um, tie your scissors by the handle to something that can't move with a very long string. You know, that's not a bad idea. I need that sort of method, I think. <laughs> I could try that, but then I'd want them somewhere else and I'd, I'd want to untie them. I think that's that's the other side of things. Like when you're, you're, you're in this workspace, like a self-proclaimed office, but most of us don't have like the fixtures and fittings that most offices would have. Like ideally, we'd all have really nice packing. You know, you, you know, it's like a reseller dream, isn't it? Like a nice thick sturdy wooden like packing table with um with rolls of bubble wrap and a roll of brown paper that you can just neatly pull down and you know just just use like yeah. that and the reality is you don't do that i mean one of the most my most annoying things is like i tend to buy these giant rolls of bubble wrap you know the big bubble bubble wrap yep. so when the rolls like full it's this huge thing just knocking about the place just just randomly moving it from one place to the to the next until because i just don't have anywhere to put it so it goes on the floor and then i'm always tripping over this damn huge you know and i could the silly thing is when i came to design all of this i've been a reseller for years and i knew what i wanted and the space under here i've even got a long pole ready to set up and i set this up this office what four years ago now 
I've still got the pole kicking around somewhere to, to suspend under here to put the bubble wrap on. Oh, that would be and so epic. One to put yeah. the brown paper on. And I've just never done it. Oh, that, would, that would be such a... <laughs> They're meant to have, like I said, hooks on to hang the stuff on. I've never done it. It's just like... That I'm, would be I'm such an amazing that. thing, mate. That would Imagine if you had that set up, you'd be like really happy. But Especially when you're dealing with bulky items because then you're like... You know, and then, you know, you find that you're, you're trying to measure out the right length of bubble wrap and then you'll find that your your scales get underneath it or your or the worst thing is your tape gun dispenser will fall over and the tape will stick to the bubble wrap. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. Yeah, it's just, and you end up just swearing and chucking yeah, it across the room. Oh, it's just, yeah, it's, oh, yeah, totally. It's always when um, like an order comes in, you're just, oh, this is what happens to me, right? I'm getting my um, post office order done online and then an order will come in. I'm like... Right, yeah. I'll be super efficient. I'll get this get one it done now. Yeah, <laughs> and I can't find anything because the room's in a mess because I've been listing, and then I've got like five minutes left, and I'm still trying to find the bubble wrap or whatever it is. Oh yeah, it's my life. But what's going to say this space here was meant to have the bubble wrap dispenser thing yeah. on a pole. It's just full of board games. Oh, <laughs> so you... waiting for Christmas, and it's become my board game like <laughs> stack, and the bin now lives there. It's so like you can't get the pole in now. No, it doesn't work. Anyway, such fun, eh? Uh, again, they sound like small things, but they add up. Um, <laughs> could you not just have a rail and then clip the string that the scissors is attached to to the rail? Then you can take it off when you need and put back off, says Charlotte. I don't well, know. I'll, I'll have a go. I'll have a go at putting my hooks up. And next tap chat, we'll see if I've achieved that tiny thing. And Peter Cummins says, I'm always stepping on the end bit of my large bubble wrap roll, popping those bubbles. Always makes me jump. Yeah, I always do that as well. I'll step back and they'll hear pop, pop, pop. And yeah. I'm like, ah, oh, just, you know, it's just annoying. <laughs> yeah, it's just very frustrating. Uh, Steve and Steph have said, we recently found two high end cookware sets that were in our trash pile. This was a result of us getting lazy with our organizing process. Yeah, I think being organized and being efficient, just it just pays off, doesn't it? Like I say, you don't lose things. And also what annoys me is when I'm listing something that I want to make a bundle out of, like Monster High Dolls or something, and I've done this exact thing so many times, I will list it like with 12 dolls or whatever, and then the next day I'll be sorting through another pile of crap and find another two or three dolls. And you're like, Oh, and then you i don't want to un or redo that listing retake all the take pictures. the photos yeah completely yeah. And it's yeah. just frustrating because you know that should be listed with that and it should be gone and out the door and it's just inefficient but i've always been this way peter cummins i think i've lost three things i frantically look for them my wife says are you looking for something i don't want her to i <laughs> I don't want to ask her, carrying on looking for 40 minutes, and then I ask her and she finds it in two minutes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I always lose my car keys and Andrea finds them. I lost my phone yesterday and Andrea found it for me. I'm a nightmare. Oh, gosh. Lonnie gets anxious when he loses his tape gun. Oh, I hate it. Right, let me see if I can get to the end. Well, it's a lot of comments coming. I think a lot of people resonate with them. Um, the Tracy, struggle. <laughs> Tracy has challenged me to get the poles hung. Yeah, but where are you going to put your board games and your, 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 your bin? Well, I do now have a space behind the door where the car mats were. So I might have a, a mount. Uh, can, I, can I just ask, is your bin like a bin or is it like a crate? It's a proper bin. It's a proper bin. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's just full as always. <laughs> oh, there's Monty. Hey. Where's Hello, Monty. Let me tilt it down a bit. <laughs> he's just chilling. <laughs> he's just oh. chilling. He's been on his little walk. Oh, and now cool. he's uh, expecting dinner. <laughs> oh, we're doing 14 miles tomorrow, I think. Oh. Yeah. Not with a dog. He wouldn't cope with no. that. We barely cope with that. Yeah, I, I don't know. We're meant to be. We've really fallen off the training wagon recently. We need to get back on it. Yeah, we haven't got long. No, tomorrow we're going to be out sourcing. So I don't know how I'm going to fit that in. Man, it's, you, it's like a three out. It's like a three hours out of your day, isn't it? Oh, it's huge. Easily, yeah. yeah, easily three and a half hours. That is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, um pgh pick says use a carpenter's nail pouch i put all my markers pen 
scissors and other small packing items in the pouch and keep it on myself while packing. That is so cool. Can you imagine one of those? Like a little belt. Belt. Yeah. You go, <laughs> take gun. That's a really cool Lock idea. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. Oh, gosh. Peter Cummins, my bin is always overflowing. For some reason, it doesn't empty itself. I know, right? I want a self emptying bin. Damn. Someone invent that. Oh, people are loving Monty. Okay. <laughs> the other thing I wanted to. Um, share today i was reading a post in the tat chat facebook group if you guys aren't on there i put a link below to that there's also a link to zahir's channel as well if you're not subbed to zahir um oh and actually on the tat chat we are a whisker away from 2000 members i think we were on 1960 something cool um which is just mental um but there was a post on there i just wanted to read a few bits from and see uh, if we can get some comments from the chat on it as well let me just open it up. I won't screen share it, but um, all right, close these. Yeah, a few days ago, somebody who was it? It was Ian Shabatar shared a post in the chat. chat. He said, "Name a word or phrase you hear at car boot sales that gets you wound up and annoyed." I don't know if you commented on this as well. As I, I did. Yeah, I did. Ah. I see early, I early on it was just um i can't remember what it was. oh yeah I, sh I shared a little story i had at a car boot where you know my favorite thing was yeah i tested it last night like <laughs> you know does this work yeah, yeah i tested it last night um uh, you know it works fine uh, i got the item home and opened it up and it literally looks like the battery compartment hadn't been opened for oh, like yeah. 10 years it was like it was horrible it there was no way he had eat ever opened the battery compartment let alone tested oh, right. it last night but but... it's just an absolute blatant lie i had that about a year ago in a charity shop i bought a little uh vintage 1980s electronic pinball machine hmm. and and written out was fully tested and working oh. so i felt pretty confident yeah. Didn't I? yeah i put it home and it had batteries in it that were just you know gone furry yeah. they were that old and just like you say, almost welded in. It's I've, like... I've got to say that really does get me going. Like, you know, it makes me a little bit mad because as we all know, rightfully or wrongly, like, you know, uh, charity shops are charging more and more money for their things. So rightfully, I'm guessing, because mm. they need to maximize the money they want. People at car boots are asking more money because obviously it's so easy to find the value of stuff now uh, versus, you know, a few years back, right? And we can accept that. I can accept all of that. But the problem we've now got is that the service that they offer has not changed. So they're still just as dodgy as ever. And what I mean by that is car boot sellers will just lie through their teeth or oh, just make stuff up. They'll just make stuff up. Yeah, it's fully work, especially when you're talking about electronics or um, or if it's something that needs to be complete. Yeah, it's all complete. It's all there. It's like new whatever so they're still giving the same shoddy lines but the prices are going up and you know you're expecting you to pay more money because now it's so much easier to find the worth of something and the same goes for charity shops they you know they're asking you know ebay money for a lot of things and yet they still are not doing um they're not backing up that cost with um you know pro you know proper testing I kind of expect it almost. You have it's very much buyer beware at car boot sales. I was shocked when I had that experience at a charity shop. It it was just but, I, but, I, I, I would like to think they made a mistake and it was on a pile of tested stuff or in the wrong place, you know, and somebody just labeled it up wrong. But they got really funny with me when I took it back. You know, you get that's that the thing. Buy it, buy it, beware. I, I understand what you're saying, even a car boot with buyer beware. But the thing is, it's like they're people are now pricing. People used to price things as where well, it's junk. It sold a scene, so it's going to be way, way cheaper than you know. Yeah. It's going to be everything used to be like fifty p a quid, two quid. People didn't used to go to car boots and ask fifty quid or a hundred quid for things as they now do you know it wasn't as prevalent yeah it's a lot more prevalent now where people are asking much higher numbers for things um yet you don't have any real you know backup of, of um on the item and the same like you said with the charity shops you, you know you still are ex you know they expect you to just take it on the chin and they they will look at you a bit funny sometimes when you go back in i mean some won't some are more than happy and they will say if you have any problems you can bring it back you know the some are lovely but um 
Yeah, but in this instant, I think they they were shocked that it said that on it and it was in a mess. You know what I mean? And then they started sort of questioning me and who, yeah. you know, was uh, I trying to do them over? You know what I mean? It's yeah. A bit, yeah. Um, <laughs> let me read out a few more from this post um, sure. from the tap chat. Um, so Ian says, yeah. The, the classic, it's it's worth X amount on eBay. We hear that all the time. I remember when I first started getting into this, you didn't hear the word eBay mentioned. And if it was, it was kind of like a, oh, it's kind of weird. It's like someone over there knows it's talking about eBay. It was like a, a secret little thing. I mean, this is going back late 90s, early 2000s. But now it's every other store holder says it to your face or they have them on labels or stuff. Yeah. And somebody replied to Ian and says, it's uh, Kaylee says, I had that today trying to sell me an original boxed fur you. Is that one of those dogs? I think it might be your fur or are they fur real. Anyway, an original boxed fur you for 30 pounds. He literally said they sell for 500 on eBay. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah. <laughs> Bloody hell. What else we've got in here? Yeah, lots of people saying people quoting to you what it's worth on ebay yeah i think Another that's... One, rudy says uh it's brand new when it's yeah. blatantly used that's that's what i shared on this post that winds me up yeah brand new never been used and you're looking at it and it's clearly been opened been used Jeez, and it's like, yeah. who are you trying to kid it's not in its original packaging or i only ever used it once like it matters <laughs> yeah, used once yeah. once or a thousand times it's used yeah, yeah. <laughs> um okay let's see what the chat is saying richard payne says spent 20 quid on a coffee machine at the car boot last thursday apparently working according to the seller got it home and it was faulty still flipped it for 50 for spares but was expecting 180 to 200 yeah it, okay. you know it, it's you you have to assume the worst i'm afraid guys but but i think it pays and, and it pays to bear this kind of conversation in mind when you're dealing with someone because if someone's out there and they're asking you know as much money as they can possibly get you know you you have to be prepared to walk away or you have to be prepared to to speak to them and say look you've you know you're quoting ebay prices where not only um do sellers have to offer returns but you can get a PayPal charge back like 180 days after you 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 sell something. You're yeah, selling this in the middle of a field, cash in hand. Exactly. Don't. It's that, yeah. that people are comparing selling at a boot sale to selling on eBay and comparing prices. Yeah. When they are too, they are as far apart marketplaces as, yeah. as you can get when you think about it. It's pretty much the same as comparing it to a shop price, isn't it? It's yeah. like, oh uh, yeah, you know, you could say like, oh uh, yeah, th but this mug I see, I've seen it for five hundred quid in Harrods, <laughs> you know. So, yeah. so it's bargain at it's bargain it, it, at two it's bargain at two hundred quid, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was just reading in the side chat, um, Deal City. I had an incident where I had already bought a tub of Lego off a guy, but then his wife got involved and said he's going to resell that, take it off him wow i didn't care too much though i had a similar in a way incident where um a lady sold me a couple of dvd box sets this is going back quite a long time and i paid like a pound or two each for them i was really happy put them in my trolley and and started to head off and then the the husband came back to the stall and was like oh we sold those box sets fantastic what did you get for them and she told him what she charged me, and it all kicked off. So I just sped up. I just, I just went. But yeah, he had one price in his mind, like five, ten pounds each, whatever. And she'd sold him for a pound or two. And I thought, sorry guys, I'm out of here. And I just went. Yeah. But yeah. Um, Lonnie says it worked last time we used it. When's the last time you used it? I think 1983. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh totally i think it's just <laughs> i think it just pays to to remember this just to be firm when negotiating because sometimes it can you know you, you don't want to overpay because if you do you can you know un unless they can show you something's working i mean you know yeah a few people on on the tat chat post were saying that it frustrates 
when you're a buyer and you you ask how much something is and they say make me an offer or how oh, much is yeah. it worth to you yeah Oh, yeah. God, I actually had that situation. There was a lady and she had um, a Beatles record, but it wasn't in very good condition. She had it on the table. So I, I, I was like, how much do you want for it? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I'll oh, make me an offer. If it's silly, I'll tell you to, you know, go away. And I said, no, I'm not going to make you an offer. She, she said, why? You know, go make me an offer. I was like, no, because it doesn't work like that. You tell me the price. I'm not going to, you know, because what's stopping me? You know, why would I say anything more than a penny? Yeah, exactly. I don't want to pay you anymore. Carl replied to uh, Danny's comment on the tap chat and said, just reply, I can't sell it and buy it from you. And I've heard a few people <laughs> use that line. I tend to go, I want to pay as little as possible. Yeah. So I'm going to probably, you know, embarrass you with my offer. And then I come in with a stupid low offer. And then they're like, no. Oh. I said, well, tell me how much you want then. Clearly exactly. that's not enough. It's like, oh, it is frustrating because yeah. it just wastes time. At Bootsa, you want to be in and out. You know, how much is it? Okay, haggle a bit. But, and then but I think it shows that things, uh, but I think it shows that attitudes have changed. Like before, like the, the reason why people do that kind of junk, and they do it on Facebook groups as well, and it's really annoying, offers, you know, and, and all that kind of jazz, because all it does is it invites like a, you know, bidding war as, as such. So you may as well stick it up at auction. Um, but like it shows there's been a real change hasn't there in in um like who sells and and like the you know the kind of sellers you're getting at car boots because before it would be people going there to literally get rid of stuff they didn't want anymore yeah. um but now obviously there's it's, there's change where people are going there to earn a living for themselves well, so i, I think the, fundamentally yeah. it's changed because in the past people maybe saw a car boot sell as their only option to sell or you put it in a local paper these days, everybody knows about eBay, and you've now got adverts on TV for Spock and Gumtree, and people are just wise to the fact that their stuff is worth X amount. You've got Music Magpie telling you every ad break, ad break to sell us your DVDs and your phones, and and within seconds, you can find out kind of what the going rate supposedly is for stuff, and it has totally changed the reselling game. And and uh, and you often hear, this is another one that winds me up, um, if I don't get what I want for I'm taking it home. It's like, well, did you just bring it to take it home? Or like, you know, yeah. there's like no negotiation. Oh. Uh, Christine said on the uh, on the post in the chat chat, um, what winds her up is when people say, it's brand new, I only wore it once. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. Or when you're selling at a car boot, uh, what winds her up is, have you got any gold or Lego? <laughs> <laughs> it's gold and mobile phones around here that people say who sells gold at a car well no, people do don't they people but... do yeah <laughs> unknowingly most of the time i'd say well some people do actually take it to sell um carl also commented uh when people say when sellers say i'd rather keep it or throw it away <laughs> <laughs> rather than take your offer oh dear uh Kat Hoban said, I saw someone say on Facebook once, if no one takes it for this price, it's going in the skip. <laughs> <laughs> How's that for a negotiating technique? Oh, God, yeah. Either you buy it or I chuck it away. <laughs> bonkers. That's Absolutely bonkers. Let me just dip in the chat again. Oh, dear. Mm -hmm. okay so many comments have come in about this yeah. actually loads it's i think it is a topic that you know get everyone's heard them and i think we all weather all these comments don't we during you, you don't pay much mind to them during the season no it's one of those mm. moments and it's what we we've all said over the years about the community we've only recently in recent years have we had this outlet where people understand what we're you know why this is funny you know what i mean <laughs> there's only a small community yeah. of people that actually understand that the real humor in a lot of this uh, it's that classic water cooler moment isn't it okay well someone just mentioned farnham that's where i went to art college who's from farnham i don't know 
Ah, Rich one day has a great response. His answer is when somebody quotes eBay at you. He says, open an eBay account then. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, I think we've all said it, or maybe just under our breath. Well, sell yeah. it on eBay then. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you want 20 quid for that, sell it on eBay. I'll give you a fiver. I've, okay. I've had that very open conversation. It depends on what mood I'm in, whether I respond to these people. Usually I'll just turn around and not even carry reply. on. Yeah. But every now and again, I just like, really? You're in a field at six in the morning and you want eBay prices. It's not going to happen. I think I think it's because there's just a lot more traders now. Um, you know, that's that's all it is. I think a lot more traders now at car boots sometimes. So you have to just accept that they're gonna they're gonna negotiate differently. You know, that's their um that's their income or yeah. whatever. It's just a really um, handy way to reference a price, really. But mm. what they don't understand is it's almost irrelevant to yeah, how because, much it's because worth the, the way, field. Yeah, because the way they're conducting their business, they yeah. don't have to pay PayPal fees. They don't have to pay eBay fees. You know, they don't they don't have to ship the items. There's so many things. It's just apples and pears, isn't it? Exactly. It's, completely... it's like a market yeah. trader comparing his stock to Harris. Yeah. You know, Harris yeah. probably pay a million pounds a month in rent or something with it. it? You know, yeah, it's it's just yeah, <laughs> bonkers. It's just bonkers that, that, that people would do that. I I think it's the I think it's that tenuous link of selling secondhand goods, isn't it? That's all it is. That's the only thing that links it. Yeah. Oh, Ken Ken Chapman. I can't actually read out what he. Put. <laughs> Ken Chapman says, uh, usually pee off you fat. <laughs> That that's what he doesn't like. Oh, um, God, yeah. That's why I don't go anymore, says Ken. Bless him. I mean, Ken gets all his stuff from auction, which yeah. you know suits his business model no end. <laughs> Trust Ken. Um oh, when people quote how much they bought it for new, as if it's yeah. relevant. Oh dear. Completely. Duncan Dundas. <laughs> the worst thing he hears at a car boot sale, we've got no burgers left, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that would be a pretty bad one to hear, to be honest. Yeah. Oh gosh. What's your food of choice at, at the uh, car boot? To hear? Oh, it depends. It depends. If if it's early in the morning, then try to get like a bacon roll or something. You know. Mm. But I end up normally getting a burger. You know, even though quite, even I when it's like early. Donuts. So sometimes. Oh, the donuts again. We had donuts last time we went. That was our best pickup. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we went to the car boot. It was just rubbish i'm not talking those little tiny greasy ones though i'm not keen on them there's oh. a school where we go that where i don't know where they get all their stuff from but they just have cakes and pastries oh right and they do those big giant kind of yeah, apple fields and all those donuts yeah. and stuff they're perfect yeah. Yeah. no no we i like the fried ones <laughs> the fresh fried ones they're yum the sugar coated oh yeah um i like the smell of them but they're a bit sickly for me um David Walder says my car boot has mostly the same folk every week, mostly pro sellers. Local charity shops seem to price from eBay very little for me to get going with, says David Wardle. The stuff is out there, David, and um, even um, at car boots, it, it comes down to seasons. You know, like um, most kind of families are not going to car boot their stuff when it's cold and wet and grey. You know, they're more likely to do it on a nice sunny Sunday. That just tends to be what what's going to attract like a regular person who just wants to, you know, if you think of car boots like a lot of us do, which is people go there to get rid of their stuff, you know, that tends to happen in the height of summer. So you're going to have to be patient some somewhat with your car boot there. Um, and the week, the people that turn up every week will turn up their rain or shine because like you say, they're the pro sellers pretty much. Um, so it, stuff is out there though. And Lonnie says they just packed a Sony Betamax machine. Thought you would dig it. Bought it for ten. Sold it for two hundred and thirty. Oh, that, Lonnie's on fire! Lonnie, yeah, that is a beast mode sale. That is definitely completely, completely. Wow. Yeah, Betamax machines are so cool. He's had some great yeah. finds recently. Yeah. Uh, um, Pixie Dust Gaming says, "What makes me laugh is when they say it's worth forty plus pounds on eBay." And then they sell it to you for a couple of pounds. So you know they were full of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Talking of uh, car boot sale food, Peter's a burger fan. He says burger all day long. Richard Hale, bacon and egg roll. Uh -huh. that, yeah, I think I'd go for the bacon and egg there. Oh, yeah. Um, if there's a McDonald's close by, their brekkies always do the job as well. Lonnie actually says, sounds so difficult shopping at a car boot. The sellers can all talk to each other and compare notes. Even though I have to drive a lot, I prefer driving around to yard sales. See, I've always thought the opposite of that. I've always thought you guys have it tough, but I can... In the changing environment, I can see how that now may be preferable because I always used to think that the guys in America have it tough because they do have to drive from house to house and you could go to a house and they might just have crap out and you could go to another house and hit the jackpot, but it is a lot of work. Whereas we just go to a field where all the families have turned up. But now that yeah. you now that you talk about it, I think the fact that there's fewer families turning up, that's the issue. I Can't think there's, there's going to be pros and cons. We have everything in one space, but mm. we also have a lot of dealers. Yeah. And because everything is in one space, all of your competition are there and have access to all of it. Whereas yeah. in America, not everyone can, can drive to all of those or know where they all are. And you're, you're less likely to come across any dealers selling, are you, out of, yeah. out of, out of their actual garage? So most are going to be genuine families just having a clear out or they're moving house or whatever. And I think also the situation means that if you're a personable like person, so for example, if you haven't seen Lonnie Garish flips, you know, Lonnie is a great guy. It's, it's a perfect environment for someone like Lonnie or, you know, to, to go there, talk to someone and, you know, actually buy things that aren't even out that's tends to be where the best stuff comes in doesn't it you get talking to someone or you don't happen to have oh yeah hold on let me go and grab it for you yeah you know and i think that's something that is 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 definitely great um yeah it's kind of next level garage sailing i follow a guy who's a gaming collector and mm -hmm. he has kind of a, a a spiel that he says and the amount of times it's led to them going oh yeah i do have one of those nintendo what's it that they had i've seen what you what the guy you're talking about yeah, um yeah. djr yeah and yeah and he, people don't assign value to like a game boy or even an n64 they just don't it doesn't trigger that they could sell it so, but he has this list of things that he says and quite often it's like oh yeah i'll just go and grab it and he scores a box of n64 games or something and it's like holy cow that just shows you know and he he films really really cool videos yeah. with a little like gopro on his chest or whatever yeah. and you see it all happening in front of you it's it's really good um, Karen, Karen says i always hear quality bit of kit that <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's, that's definitely something you will hear yeah um <laughs> just going back to the uh touch up group post oh tom put a post on uh it's brand new and never been used in brackets he says it has and it's missing bits yeah all the time i see that yeah or uh, georgie says uh yeah the discs are all mint <laughs> i don't care what anyone says i check every disc <laughs> Deal City says, I hate when there's greedy buyers who hog all the good items in a small car boot sale. <laughs> Lucky I have a broad knowledge of items to a broad knowledge of, of items to pick up. That's a well, peculiar <laughs> comment. Yeah, I mean if I'm if I'm first to the good stuff, I will grab the good stuff. All of it. And, and all of it. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't leave, any, <laughs> didn't leave any behind. You, if you're leaving any behind, you're doing it wrong. Um. Oh, Martin Holgate, I loved his comment on the thread on the touch chat group. He says, uh, when you have to keep asking for a price, and then he says, so how much is this? It's new. Yes. How much is it? I've only worn it once. Yes. How much? My <laughs> nan bought it for me. Yes, but how much is it? It's worth £50 on eBay. Yes, but how much is it? For, you know what I mean? Yeah. Brilliant. We've Completely. all had that one. It's just get to the point already. Stop trying to big it up yeah <laughs> it's, it's sentimental my nan bought it for me yeah i don't care <sighs> and steve george says uh they say make me an offer and then when you make an offer they get offended <laughs> ah dear he says i had a guy last week who said this on 
a couple of cameras and started having a go at me because he didn't like my offer. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I I, I actually had one which was really weird, okay? Um, I, I was at a car boot. I picked this item up. Um, it was a camera, okay? I think I can't remember what it was now, but it was a camera. I just picked it up and have a look at it. And the guy's like, pound for that pound for that and i was like okay thanks and, and i looked at it and i just put it down because it, it just wasn't any good and he was offended he, he couldn't understand like you know and, and i think he muttered to his missus or something like you know but like for like you know for god's sake or whatever that you know he was just shocked that he couldn't in his mind he was that was really cheap he was offering you know he gave me a really cheap price on something and because i'd picked it up that I'd put it back down and it wound him up really badly because you, because you've got it in your hand. Yeah, that's what? it. Yeah. But you don't. <laughs> thump. And I, was thinking, I was thinking, imagine if I'd done that in the shop, you know, imagine if you go to a corner shop and you pick up a Snickers, but really you want, you know, you, you decide that you don't want it and you put it back down and the shopkeeper's like, it's only 60 P. <laughs> you know, what? what's wrong with my merchandise? <laughs> Come back here. Yes. I was going to say I had an odd experience once where the where the seller just talked himself down and down and down. I I was rummaging through a box of CDs under a stool, and I asked the guy how much are your CDs, and he goes fifty pence each. Um, there was about a box of about sixty odd, and I found a couple of Beatles albums and some other bits I was interested in. So I just said thanks and just kept looking. Didn't say another word, and I was busy picking out. I'd found five or six that I wanted. And then he just kept kind of, he was looking all like impatient. And, and then he suddenly said, just give me three pound the whole box. And I was like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, just, I was going to give him more than what he wanted for the whole box in the few that I'd picked out. And I was like, okay. Um, so I ended up sending all the crap from the box to Music Magpie for about 15 pounds, sent a bunch to Amazon and did a load on eBay and got about 50 odd quid out of the box amazing but he talked himself out of more money it was ridiculous completely okay um yes yeah, simon burrows posted it's worth x on ebay and he says well effing sell it on ebay then <laughs> <laughs> yeah most people are saying that yeah one of those situations but what you mentioned there's quite interesting as well that's like that is actually a really standard negotiating tactic the the person who speaks first will tend to get the worst of the deal um uh, i don't know like bona fide hustlers mentioned this a few times on his channel in the past where the the trick is just to stay silent um you know if so you know just 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 carry on doing what you're doing and wait for wait for the seller to speak first and you know chances are they'll just be like tell you what you know have it for they'll just offer yeah. you less money well, you know, give you money off don't don't show your hand and yeah. and and don't be afraid to walk off mm -hmm. i have i have walked off and gone two stools down before being called back before have you ever done that you just literally put it down and walk off and then be like <laughs> A fiver then. <laughs> Shout down the field at you. Uh, Richard Payne's actually made a really good comment. Um, this is quite funny. And this happens a lot. I hate it when they want a pound each and you ask how much for the lot and they say an amount that is more than buying them all individually. <laughs> you point this out and they get offended. That's a very good point. The, there seems to be a lot of discrepancies when it comes to you know numbers <laughs> oh, yeah maths Think, at car boot yeah. sales is epic it's it's <laughs> always worth doing the how much for the lot thing yeah. you know I've, I've had situations where you know they're they're like i said that guy with the cds they were 50p each but 60 was three pounds it's like <laughs> okay ask ask the bulk deal because sometimes it will blow your mind yeah um let me see what else people said on the post Okay. Just so much talk about people hating people referencing eBay. Oh, uh, Sib K says, definitely speak last. <laughs> he goes, I remember an old series of Apprentice where two teams were negotiating items they wanted to sell and the first team gave away the names of all the items they wanted first. Mm. Yeah. Do the dance. Don't reveal, don't show your hand. Um, Jay Penny said on the thread, um, 
when he asks, have you got any dot, dot, dot? And they say, oh, yeah, I had loads of them this morning, this but morning. some other guy yeah. just bought them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nothing worse than that. Or it's when you find, um, like, there's a Nintendo Wii there and you say, have you got any games or have you got any Mario games or whatever? And they say, oh, I had loads, but somebody bought the lot. And then you <laughs> wish you hadn't asked. <laughs> yeah. Ryan says, if excited about an item or a big haul, how do you hold your excitement in? Just you just do, don't you? Just Yeah. Just play a lot of poker. That will help. I love yeah. poker. Show, show disinterest. It's not actually easy, though. Uh, or just if you're always smiling, then you're always smiling, aren't you? Yeah. So. Right. How are we doing for time? Oh, wow. Yeah. Look at that bang on seven there. o'clock. Lena says, have you tried selling our car boot before? Not me, but Nick has. Yeah, we've done plenty over the years. And sometimes they're really good. And sometimes they're just frustrating as hell. And you get people haggling you over 10p. Um, but it is a good way to clear out once in a while. Because you're at a car boot sale, you end up buying more stuff anyway. And uh, David McMillan, McMillan says hi. And Thailand Heron says, do you think there is a YouTube chat for sellers taking the mickey out of buyers? Oh, oh there should be. We should do it from the other way around. There should be. Yeah. And we, we could go in and make comments. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. Yeah, I wonder if there is a little community of boot sale sellers. I, I doubt it because they'll all be secretly doing it and not paying any tax. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Well, unless you've got any more questions, guys, or things to touch on, we may as well wrap this one up. We're we're on the button of uh, seven o'clock. Lots yeah, I, and lots of people popped in to say hello today, which is fantastic. One hundred and fifty-six people still in. Superb. Um, the link below is there for the Tat Chat Facebook group. If you want to go over, there's there's lots of chat going on. Like I said, the thread that I was reading from is still active, so you can go and join in on that. Um, thanks to everybody for popping in. Um, I just noticed David McMillan's in there. Hi, David. And, yeah, we will be back. Uh, well, Zaheer will be back on Friday with your weekly Friday. But before that, work. I'll yeah. be back on... Um... I wanted to mention on Wednesday night, um, 1 a.m. UK time, I think it is, I'm going to be in the Thrift Battle Championship um, on Bonafide Hustlers channel against um, Casey, the Rockstar Flipper. Um, I've actually got a link. Do you mind if I shove that into the chat? Yeah, sure. Let me see. I, I don't know if it will work, actually, because it's... Um, I think Bonafide Hustler sent me the yeah because you know sometimes email addresses and or like some web addresses don't work but maybe because it's YouTube it should be okay but I don't know I'll try it anyway yeah no, you, that's, no, that's it, not, not, YouTube that's, links normally work uh, if not we will put know. um yeah go over to the Tat Jack group and and pin it to the top of the Tat Jack group so everyone can find it anyway yeah I'll do that definitely as well so let me just have a look we'll stick it on there and I'll, I'll pin it. Oh, there we go. Yeah, that's come through fine. Yeah. So that's the link. If you guys want to watch that, that's going to be at 1 a.m. against uh, Casey Rockstar Flipper. That's Thrift Battle number 10. So, um, oh, you know. cheers, David. Um, David's just super chatted to two pounds. Thank you so much for that. Really appreciate it. Very kind of you, David. Yeah, definitely. But yeah. So, have you got enough stuff? I'm um, not meant to tell us what you've got, but you know what? I'm going. Me and Becca, we're going out tomorrow um, to get some more stuff. Oh, I've got, yeah, I've got some stuff. I did actually pick up a nice item yesterday when Tom was um, around. Um, but like, yeah, it was. Um, I need to pick up more stuff. I don't have the full five yet. <laughs> Damn. So it's... Yeah. Well, hopefully, I will be there cheering you on. Uh, if you guys can make it. The link is there. We'll put the link in the tat chat as well if, if uh, you're watching this after the fact. Uh, yeah, so come over there and support Zaheer. Yeah. I assume they're going to do this again. Let's we'll start again with a bunch more resellers. I'm guessing they're going to do another season. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the plan. I think this is, a, this is going to be a continuing thing. So Yeah, maybe we should come up yeah, with get in a version. Ask them for the rights. <laughs> we'll just change it a bit. So we yeah, just... <laughs> yeah, we'll just... nah, they're cool. I'm sure they won't mind. Maybe we should come up with something. 
Like, it's it's uh, a lot of fun, yeah. It's or, a, or a twist on on the theme, you know. Yeah, we'll have a think about that. Anyway, okay, we'll leave you there. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, if you enjoy what we do, please give us a thumbs up. Just let us know that you are appreciating it. And um, yeah, we'll see you Wednesday as it is. Um, Griff Battle Friday, Friday as it is. Jim Wegg Sunday for our Sunday hangout. And I'll be playing Fortnite every night as well. <laughs> oh yeah. Right, cheers, guys. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for here. See you later. Bye, guys. <laughs>